Praise the Lord, Church on the Rock. Good Wednesday evening to each and every one of you. So glad to see you in the house of the Lord this evening. Amen. Real quick with announcements. Remember to join us this Sunday morning at 10 a.m. for our Sunday school classes that are going on. We have classes, of course, for adults, children, and youth. Also at 11 a.m., our community worship service will begin and join us. God has been doing great things. I mean, if you enjoyed everything that God did here this past Sunday, I felt that there was a challenge in the Holy Ghost. We want to be in that first chair. Amen. Amen. Uh, there are signups for Search for Truth. If you've never been through Search for Truth or there's someone coming here and they've never been through Search for Truth, uh, there's a sign up in the bulletin board uh, in the foyer. Make sure you sign up for those. Those are going to be uh, starting in March at the conclusion of our current Prayer University series. Uh, and those will be uh, in the Connect room. So make sure if you've never been through Search for Truth, Brother Frank does an amazing job with Search for Truth. So it's going to be very engaging. So make sure you sign up for that. This weekend, everybody say this weekend. Alabama Men's Conference. If you've not signed up, make sure you sign up and make sure you show up. Brother Rick Treese, Brother J.H. Osborne are going to be our guest ministers. And I know that God is going to richly bless and move in the lives of the men of the state of Alabama and in this church specifically. Let's bring something back with us that Sunday morning. Amen. Also, uh, Sound Bible Doctrine classes. Uh, that will be the main class that will be starting up at the same time that Search for Truth um, will be starting as well as our other Discover classes. But for Sound Bible Doctrine, there are books, it's optional, but there are books available for sale that go along with those lessons. So if you would like to purchase a book to be able to go through Sound Bible Doctrine with us, uh, they're $12 for the ones that we have here. If you pay for them on site, they're $12. And if you go and pay for them online, and that's just because of the processing fees and everything, they're $16 online. So if you want to pick one up, they're $16 online, $12 on site. Everybody say amen. If we could, let's stand all across this place. Uh, we've got several needs. Let's remember... Tina Dodd, Brother Murray, and Brother Sinners, all those names. And let's specifically remember Sheila Franklin and Brother Twyman. We're not getting good reports on Sheila Franklin or Brother Twyman at all. And they need a miracle in this instance. But we know God is a miracle worker. Amen. And so let's take these needs before the Lord. If you've got unspoken requests, you can make it known by the lifting of your hands at this time. If you need prayer in your body, you can come to the front. The ministry will anoint you. They'll pray the prayer of faith over you. We know it can heal the sick. Amen. Let's take all these names and all these needs before the Lord, and let's just really pray and touch God right now. God, we thank you for everything that you do, God, and everything that you are, God. You are our healer, God, and we lay every need, every care, every situation at your feet right now, God. I pray that you touch every need, everything spoken and unspoken and only the way that you can, God, for we know that one touch of your mighty hand, oh God, can totally change or reverse any situation or any life right now. God, we pray for Tina Dodd, God, that you would intervene in her life right now. And we speak healing in Brother Murray's body right now. We speak then plead the name of Jesus over his life and over his body right now. We pray, God, that you would go and minister to brother sinners right now, Lord. We pray that you would begin to move and minister healing in his body and encouragement and strength in his body, God. We speak healing in Sheila Franklin's body right now. We pray that the angel of the Lord would go forth to her right now and minister healing by the power and the authority of your word. God, you said by your stripes we are healed and we claiming it right now. God, I speak healing in Brother Twyman's body right now, Lord. Lord, you are our healer, and we claim that healing power right now. 
pray right now that you would send the angels of the Lord right now to Brother Twyman and minister healing to his body, God. We believe you, oh God. We trust you and we thank you in advance for everything that you're doing and how you're moving right now, oh God. We thank you, we bless you, and we praise your holy name in Jesus' name name in Jesus name let's thank the Lord for what he's going to do in every situation God we trust you with these requests we trust you with these petitions right now and we thank you for what you're going to do at this time the ushers are getting ready to come to receive our evening offering and let's give unto the Lord as he's given us and let's worship the Lord with the praise team as they sing of heaven, aren't you? 
But one thing I know is we don't have to wait till heaven for those promises to come. And we can count on anything we face here and now. Our God is greater than every bit of it. And I just want to praise him for that tonight.
just exalt his name and praise together. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. It's good to see all of you here tonight. Our services have just been so awesome lately. Sunday was no exception. God really ministered to us. Amen. We got reports of healing coming back from the weekend when Brother Stoops was here. Amen. The good things are happening. Hallelujah. Olivia got baptized in the name of Jesus Christ last week. Amen. Hallelujah. It's good to have Chris with us. Amen. I wasn't paying any attention, and Brother Kerry wasn't over there, and I walked over and commented, boy, you got a green shirt on tonight. Didn't realize I wasn't talking to Kerry, so if you ever get that other one, your, your sister, we get all three of you here. You didn't know it, but there's a family of triplets there, so Chris, good to have you with us, and I do like that green shirt. Amen. <laughs> Amen. You may be seated. I'm going to, I got carried away last week and forgot it was Wednesday and acted like it was Sunday. But I'm going to slow down a little bit tonight, I think. <clears throat> and I'm not going to start with a scripture, but I'm going to start with a statement. He who is not at peace with himself is at peace with no one. He who is not at peace with himself is at peace with no one. So I'm going to give you a piece of my mind tonight. Just going to spell it a little bit different. I was just in my early teens when a song was introduced that became a very big hit in the rock and roll world. I've often reflected on the lyrics and even did a little research behind the song. It was recorded by a group called The Fifth Dimension. When the moon is in the seventh house and Jupiter aligns with Mars, then peace will guide the planet and love will steer the stars. This is the dawning of the age of Aquarius. Age of Aquarius, Aquarius. Harmony and understanding, sympathy and trust abounding. No more falsehoods or derision, golden living dreams of vision, mystic crystal revelation, and the mind's true liberation, Aquarius. And then they repeat. That was a good one. I got your attention on that one, didn't I? I got my attention on that one. When the moon is in the seventh house, when Jupiter aligns with Mars, then peace will guide the planets and love will steer the stars. The age of Aquarius is supposed to be the age of peace brought on by the alignment of planets. The quote-unquote experts differ on when it began, with most arguing from the mid-19th century to the so-called peace movement of the 1960s and 1970s, otherwise known as the hippies. If it was in the mid-19th century, 1840, 1845, the earlier prognostications, can't even speak tonight, if the earlier prognostications are accurate, what a time of peace it has been since the mid-1800s the Civil War, All right. the Civil War, the Spanish-American War, World War I, World War II, the Korean War, the Vietnam Conflict, the Middle Eastern Wars, and now the War on Terrorism. What a wonderful age of peace. We have because of the alignments of the planet. Men of peace like Adolf Hitler, Mussolini, Saddam Hussein, Osama bin Laden. What a wonderful world of peace in which we live. 
A common position expressed by many astrologers see the age of Aquarius as that time when humanity takes control of the earth and its own destiny as its rightful heritage, with the destiny of humanity being the revelation of truth and the expansion of consciousness, and that some people will experience mental enlightenment in advance of others and therefore be recognized as the new leaders in the world. Therefore, I am supposed to assume that peace will be the result of a planetary alignment that suddenly causes all human beings to forget their differences and get along with each other. What a marvelous thought. While there are many major flaws in this argument, I'll concentrate on just one. The idea that something outside of myself will produce peace. I'm going to repeat that. The idea that something outside of myself will produce peace. I'm going to say that again because I know we don't have a whole lot of age of Aquarius people in this house tonight, but I would venture to say that there are people in the, under the sound of my voice who still have not learned what I just said, the idea that something outside of myself will produce peace. So I'll repeat my opening phrase. He who is not at peace with himself is at peace with no one. The Bible is very explicit about what will happen when men begin to declare peace. 1 Thessalonians 5, 1 through 3 reveals that, but of the times and of the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. When men say peace and safety, Sudden destruction will come upon the earth like labor pains comes upon a woman giving birth. Now, I have never experienced that. But I have dodged a few times when somebody that I was very close to experienced that. It is very obvious that something is being born at this time, but it's not the age of Aquarius it is not going to be a super enlightenment of the human mind that's all of a sudden going to find a solution to the world's problems. If there is anything proven throughout Scripture and throughout history, man is not capable of governing himself. Some of us still believe that we can. It's the day of the Lord that's going to bring peace the time of the reign of Jesus Christ on this earth. And this peace will only come after the most devastating period of time in human history. So I'm supposed to be giving you peace tonight, and I'm, I'm, I'm probably not doing so at this point. But I'm telling you the truth. The peace that's going to come on this world will come when Jesus Christ returns. And before that time, it is prophesied that there would be times of tribulation and times of trouble and times of problems. And I believe we've actually entered into that time period now. That ought to cheer you up. But it's the truth. The Bible in numerous places declares the reign of Christ on earth at a time of peace. Revelation 21 through 3 discusses this event. And I saw an angel come down from heaven having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, the old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up. Boy, I tell you what, I know he's probably talking about putting a lock on it, but I wish he'd just shut him up right now. And shut him up. And set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. The binding of Satan is a key element in the kingdom of peace that's coming to this world. 
Revelation 12, 10 identifies his role. And I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. Notice the accuser, not necessarily the false accuser. You thought he was always a false accuser. No, he wants to accuse you before God of what you did. But he can't get past the blood because it's covered by the blood. But accuse, accusation creates division. Accusation creates division. Accusations bring condemnation, destroying inner peace. Accusations defy the blood of Jesus Christ and bring guilt upon the children of God. Guilt disrupts harmony and destroys peace and tranquility. Accusations bring torment to the mind, and tormented minds do not know peace. So afraid somebody's going to find out I was a sinner. So afraid somebody's going to find out I'm imperfect. Well, if you're perfect, you're just not going to fit in around here. When we look at the formula for peace in the millennium, we get a revelation. I'm talking softly, but I'm saying something very awesome. Two things happen in the millennial reign. Jesus will reign. Satan will be bound. Click, click. Jesus will reign. Satan will be bound. Now, God is a God of principles. Just like the blueprint for salvation in the Old Testament is the same as the blueprint for salvation in the New Testament. I, I, I'm going to do a Bible study uh, on all the three-step processes throughout the Bible that delivered people, God's people. So the blueprint remains the same. You can see salvation in the blueprint of the temple. You can see the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus in the blueprint of the temple. You can see repentance, baptism in Jesus' name, the infilling of the Holy Ghost in the blueprint of the temple. The blueprint remains the same. So God's principles remain the same. So if his principles are consistent, it is logical to assume that what brings peace in the millennium will bring peace at any time. Peace is not the result of a correlation of outside forces. Peace is the result of an inner transformation. Bind the influence of Satan in your life and let Jesus reign in your heart and you will know peace. The same formula that works in the thousand-year reign works for the church. Bind the influence of Satan in your life and let Jesus Christ reign in your life and you will have peace. Now, I know this doesn't sound too dynamic, but if you'll just let me keep going, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you something powerful about what you can have in Jesus Christ. Amen. So we wait on the outward alignment of things. I will have peace if, if I can just get along with my neighbor. Isn't that amazing? Your neighbor is saying, I can have peace if I can just get along with my neighbor. It's my neighbor's the reason I can't have peace. If I can just get my political positions clearly seen, then I can have peace. If you'll all just stop and agree with me, then I'll have peace. If my family would just give me some space, I'll have peace. If I had a better job, I have peace. I hope you're tired, not mad. I can't tell the difference whether you're looking right now. I just had a better job. 
If I didn't have to deal with health, health issues, I would have peace. If, if a fog had wings, he wouldn't bump his rump when he hopped. If, you live your life operating on an if, if there was an alignment. Maybe you're not waiting for the stars and planets to get aligned and the moon to get in the seventh house. I didn't know it had any houses, but. But maybe you are waiting on something outside of yourself to get an alignment before you feel justified to have peace. The peace of my mind is not predicated by an if. Say that with me. The peace of my mind is not predicated by an if. The peace of my mind is not predicated by an if. If my wife was just sweeter. Amen. I've just had to learn to have peace in spite of the fact, okay, <laughs> what I'm trying to get across to you is that even though we're not uh, 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 believing in some alignment of the planet that's going to bring an age of Aquarius and human enlightenment and, and these outside alignments are finally going to open up and humanity is going to have a deeper understanding and he's going to have peace and we're just waiting on some outside forces to work together. I am talking about us and our outside forces. If I can just get all my outside forces and alignment and everything just right, I believe I can have some peace and as long as you think that way, you will never have Peace that is not predicated by ifs. Good days, bad days, ups, downs. God's God of the ups, God's God of the downs. He's a mountaintop God and a valley God. Hallelujah. He is unconditionally God. He is God all the time. Isaiah 26, 3 is a good place to start. Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. I wonder why. Because he trusteth in thee. If you want peace, get your mind on the Lord. I pray this one of my prayer prayer verses. Amen. Lord, you said you would keep me in perfect peace if I keep my mind stayed on you. I pray when I plead the blood, I, I, I claim the blood over yesterday's failures and I plead the blood over my future. I plead the blood over my mind. I plead the blood over my spirit. I plead the blood over my body going forward. I plead the blood over temptation I plead the blood over everything that will come against me because 75% of grace is overcoming, not being covered by sins, but overcoming future problems. We are not just delivered from sin. We are empowered to live above sin through grace. Amen. But, but when I start, mind, you know, in, in Isaiah 53 is so wonderful. He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. I've got my emotional battle there. The chastisement of my peace was upon him. I've got my physical battle there. With his stripes, I am healed. I've got my spiritual battle. He was wounded for my transgressions and bruised for my iniquities. Everything that I need is right there in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. And so I pray this verse, Lord, you said you would keep me in perfect peace if I'll keep my mind stayed on you. I am claiming today that I am going to walk in peace. I'm not going to be predicated by the ifs. If my boss is in a good mood, I'll have peace today. If my body don't hurt, I'll have peace today. If everybody in the house is a good mood, I'll have peace today. If, 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 if. The peace of my mind is not predicated by an if. 
a few points from this short verse. Peace has to do with the mind, not what is happening outside of a person. Peace has to do with the mind. Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. Peace has to do with the mind. If you're going to have peace, start with the mind. Don't start with trying to get everything in your life in a perfect position. When I went to college, I was a painter for a while. And for the most part, when I left the job on Friday and got back on Monday, it was exactly the way I left it. Pastor in the church, nothing's going to be the same when I wake up on Monday morning as it was on Sunday. We're people. We're all changing. Life changes. Situation change. As always, if, you're, if, if your peace is, 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 is determined by what's going on around you, you're going to live on a roller coaster ride, and you're going to say, well, I have peace today, but I don't have peace tomorrow. The peace of God is not predicated by ifs. It is predicated by relationship with Jesus Christ. You will keep me in perfect peace if I will keep my mind stayed on you. Second point of this verse is peace is a result of trust because he trusted. Trust. Oh, that word trust. I call trust graduate faith. It's the higher degree of faith. Trust is a higher degree of faith. Faith says, move this mountain. Trust said, I'm going to be your child whether that mountain's moving or not. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Trust is a powerful thing. Trust says that I believe that my life is in God's hand. And whatever he allows to happen to me, the good is going to come out of it. Uh Uh-huh. Trust. So when you live by trust, circumstances don't wreck your ship. How are you doing? Well, I'm doing fine under the circumstances. Well, get out from under the circumstances and get on top of them. Hallelujah. Sometimes when the preacher pauses, he's fighting or saying something, and I won, so I'm not going to say it. All right. Peace is a result of trust, not debate nor conflict. If I can just win this argument, I'll have peace. Y'all, you lose a friend in the process. I just got to get my point across. You are. Third point is peace comes because one trusts in God. Because you trust in God. If you trust in God, outside forces won't rattle you. This is so simple that it's too simple for some of your complex minds. I have peace because of what is going on on the inside of me, not what is going on on the outside of me. I'm going to say it again. I have peace because of what is going on on the inside of me, not what is going on on the outside of me. I have peace in the storm because my trust is not in the storm. I have peace in conflict because my trust is not in the conflict. I have peace in worldly turmoil because my peace is not anchored in this world. I have peace in sickness because my trust is not in sickness. Such a simple little verse, but oh so awesome. Romans 8, 28, and we know that all things, all, all, all things. Let's just do it the southern way. Ow, ow. Amen. We had a a little ensemble singing one time, and there was one guy that he was, man, he was a deep south. And we were singing, I'm here to give you all. 
And I mean, it came out. I am here to give you all. I said, okay, now I know that's how you say all around the world with it, but can we say all, okay? <laughs> all things. Everybody say all things. So, Zach, what thing is left out? None. None left out. Even that thing you didn't like. Preaching to you right now. All things work together. Everybody say together. Think about the word together. So, some of you chefs, you bakers, you can bake some stuff. See how fat you've made me over the years? But you said, Brother Davidson, I decided to bake you a cake. But I got in a hurry, so here's some sugar, and here's some salt, and here's some flour, and whatever else you put in it. And, uh, you know, if you just grab it one item at a time and eat it. I remember one time at a church picnic, Sister Angie Sinners made some ice cream, but instead of adding sugar, she added salt. We didn't have ice cream that day. <laughs> but when you put it everything together, let God put it all together. You'll look back and say, good came out of that. For we know that all things work together for good to them that, do you love God? Everybody love God? You qualify. And them who are called according to his purpose. How many feel like you're called of God for something? Wow, you, every one of you qualify for this verse. You love God and you're called according to his purpose. That means that he promised you that everything is going to work together for good. Hmm. All right. It's a good scripture. Now, how many of you believe it? Many of you are working hard to believe it. How many of you believe it except when you get your thumb caught in a linen closet? Hallelujah. Amen. All things, not some things, all things. God can bring good out of every circumstance and situation. God can bring good out of every circumstance and situation. Didn't say, you know. One of my favorite books I ever read was 10 Dumb Things Smart Christians Believe. I think his name's Larry Osborne wrote it. 10 Dumb Things Smart Christians Believe. One of them is everything has a purpose. That simply is just not biblical. There's some things that happen to us because we're in this world. God didn't say every single thing that happens to you has a purpose. If you stub your toe today, there was a divine purpose in that toe stub. What he did promise us is that when everything works together, something good is going to come out of it. He didn't say everything that happens to you will be good. He said everything will work together to produce good. What am I talking about? I'm talking about trust. If you trust God, you believe this verse. If you trust God, you live by this verse. If you trust God, you won't violate this verse. You will never say, I'm in despair, like Anne of Green Gables said, I'm in despair. And Marilla said, to despair is to turn your back on God. Wow. John 14, 26, 27 promises peace through Jesus Christ. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to you. Remember whatsoever I have said unto you, peace I 
leave with you, not if you endure to the end when you're saved, you're going to have peace. I think I said it last week. Maybe the reason everybody will be happy over there is because happy people are going. I know life's rough and hard and tough and you're miserable down here, but if I can just ever get to heaven, I'll be happy. You don't know how rough it is till you start living for God. I have found his grace is all complete. He supplieth every need. While I sit and learn at Jesus' feet, I am free as free indeed. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory, full of glory, full of glory. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory. Oh, the half has never yet been told. I have found the joy no tongue can tell, living in the realm of grace. Oh, the Savior's presence is so real. I can see his smiling face. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory, full of glory, full of glory. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory. Oh, the half has never yet been told. Thank you very much. Peace, I leave with you. He's talking about when he went away. He left peace. Peace I give to you, not as the world gives, de 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 uh, determined by outside forces. Not as the world gives, determined by outside forces. My peace I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. If the world ever does have peace, it's just for a moment. 6,000 years of history has proven that man cannot govern himself and man cannot get along with other men. Scientists did an evaluating study to determine the most vicious creature that ever lived. And guess what their conclusion was? <laughs> Mankind, somebody said woman over there. After all, it was she-bear that came out of the wood and <laughs> ate up the young men. Peace only comes through the governance of God. Did you hear me? That's what he said, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Thy government come, thy will be done. Thy government come. Thy kingdom, thy government come. You need to pray this, Lord, let your government come to my life. Let your government come to my family. Let your government come to my church. Let your government come to my community. Let your government come to our state. Let your government come to our world. The governance of God brings peace. Philippians 4, 6, and 7 gives a good addition to the formula for peace be careful for nothing or don't worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God and the peace of God, which doesn't make a lick of sense, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. I love that, which passes all understanding. Let me give you a sophisticated way of saying it. And... The peace of God which defies logic. Why does it defy logic? Because logic goes by external. And logic said nothing is aligned in my life right now. My moon ain't in the seventh house yet. Jupiter's not quite aligned with Mars in my life. So peace is not guiding the planet and love's not steering the stars. Matter of fact, there's a few fallen stars. 
Logic says if everything gets aligned, I'll have peace. He said, I'll give you a peace that defies logic because it's not defined by what is without, but it's defined by what is within. Mm. Shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Look at this carefully. Be careful for nothing. Don't worry about anything. How many of you have always obeyed that scripture? Pray about everything. Prayer is the key to peace. Everybody say, prayer is the key to peace. The prayer of faith is the key to peace. The peace of God passes understanding. In plain old Davidson Bible, and the peace of God, which don't make a lick of sense, will keep your hearts and minds. The prayer element is powerful. I'm going to say this, and I get looks when I say this, but I'm going to say it, and I ain't going to back down, so we want to stand up. The prayer of faith always produces. Now you're making me feel like I don't have no faith. Sometimes it produces the answer, and sometimes it just produces peace. But the prayer of faith always, you'll know you pray the prayer of faith when you either get the answer or you get peace. You'll know you've prayed the prayer of faith. But if there's no peace, the prayer of faith has not yet been prayed. Listen to Paul's account in 2 Corinthians 12, 7 through 10. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan, to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord three times. Three times. How many times have you besought the Lord? that it might depart from me. I sought the Lord three times that it might depart from me, which leads me to believe, Brother Parker, that he did not seek him four times. Because after three times, he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. I remember when my 30s, when my body just collapsed and I couldn't even control myself. Three, three or four hours a day, I just was rolling in the floor. Just, and, 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 and the only thing I could do was I could, I could stop and I just started singing, His strength is perfect when my strength is gone. He'll carry us when we can't carry on. Raised in his power, the weak become strong. His strength is perfect. His strength is perfect. And I promise you, no matter what I was going through, if I just begin to sing that song for too long, I'd feel the calm of God come upon me. And yes, I look back over my shoulder now, and I learned things in that time that I could not have learned in any other way. And I came out of that closer to God before I collapsed. And I literally collapsed. But right before, the week before I collapsed, I was, I was praying and almost an audible voice spoke to me and said, the greatest days of your ministry are ahead of you. Just a few days later, I couldn't even control my nervous system. But I promise you, for six months, I remembered the greatest days of your ministry are ahead of you. And I'll tell you what else. I wrote a song right before this happened, and I didn't sing it until after I got out of it. Oh, Satan tries to threaten me. He comes with sickness and disease. 
He wants to fill my heart with fear, but I know that the Lord is real. And if he chooses not to do so, there's one thing I want you to know. I'm not afraid to cross over. God gave me that song, and I got to the point, you know, when I was going through this and I felt the assault of the enemy, you know, and, and those panic attacks would just hit me out of, out of nowhere. Here's the way I overcame it. I would, I would just speak it, and I said, okay, I had one of those yesterday, and it didn't kill me. It's not going to kill me today, and if it does kill me, I'm going to open my eyes in the presence of Jesus Christ, so you are not going to frighten me with this again. And he has not frightened me with that again. Hallelujah. And that's why that bridge in that song says, To live is Christ, to die is gain. Hallelujah. I sought the Lord three times. He said, Most gladly, therefore, will I glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Wow, I got a revelation. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities. That don't sound much. <laughs> in reproaches, in necessities, in persecution, in distress, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I'm strong. I got a revelation. Before my collapse, I thought Stan Davidson could build a church. After my collapse, I got to know the one who could build a church. Amen. I got to know the one that I could trust in. Historians say that Paul was eventually healed. While I cannot find scripture to verify this, I believe it's likely true. God is a faithful God. However, the point of the passage is that Paul did get his answer from God. After praying, he glorified in his infirmity because he saw the spiritual gain. It was bringing him, and no matter what he was facing, the prayer of faith produced peace in his heart. The prayer of faith produced peace in his heart. I'm telling you what, the prayer of faith will either bring the answer or you will walk out of there with peace in your heart. Peace is not the result of outside influences. Peace is the result of an inner trust. So if you're waiting for the planets to get aligned, and if you're waiting for life circumstances to get aligned, you have a long wait ahead of you. For he who is not peace with, at peace with himself is at peace with no one. But when you get the real peace on the inside, nothing on the outside can take it away. I don't have peace that is predicated by ifs. Hallelujah. So what if you have a problem tomorrow? My peace is not an if. I had peace in the hospital when I was there 21 days. Amen. I got peace in my heart. You know what? I'm 64 years old. You know? The way my body aches right now, the six, next 70, 75 years is going to be tough. And I'm kind of like little Johnny when the teacher said, how many of you want to go to heaven? Everybody but Johnny raised his hand. She said, Johnny, you want to go to heaven? He said, well, I thought you was getting a group together right now. So I kind of feel like Johnny, but on the other hand, I'm not afraid of death. The, the split second after I die, I will be happier than I have ever been in all of my life. Hallelujah. Because my peace is not determined by external things. My peace is right here. And the only real peace that I have, dear Lord, is in you. The only real peace that I have, dear Lord, is in you. Through all life's frustrations, I need you. I know I do. And the only Real peace that I have, dear Lord, is in you. Let's stand together. 
Hallelujah. So I just wanted to give you a piece of my mind tonight and tell you about the peace that is in my mind and my spirit. Hallelujah. Why don't we just lift our hands and love God. Thank you for his wonderful promises. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the wonderful peace that you have given us, Lord, in the midst of turmoil. There's, there's people, Lord, in this building, God, that are facing difficult situations, but you can give them peace in their heart right now if they'll just learn to trust you and believe that all things work together for good to them that love the Lord, who are called according to his purpose. Lord Jesus, we thank you for these precious people. Thank you for the wonderful work of love that you have performed in our lives. Thank you, God, for their faithfulness to your house. And Lord God, I believe with all of my heart that it is the peace of God which sets us apart. Amen. 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 If you'll study that scripture, when he talks about how the world will know his people, and then he starts talking about the power of the Holy Spirit, talks about you will have my spirit in you. But he doesn't really answer that question on how the world will know the children of God from the others. He says, I'll put my spirit in you. And he starts, but when he comes down to the end, he says, Here's the answer, my peace I give to you. My peace I live, I leave with you, not as the world giveth. The thing that makes the difference between us is when we go through the same thing they go through, they look at us, hey, there's something in them that's bringing peace in this situation. No matter what comes on this earth, I'm gonna have peace. And if that moon ever does get in the seventh house, I'm going to have peace before it happens. Praise the Lord. God bless every one of you. Thank you for coming to Life Source on Wednesday night. You're dismissed.